Hey guys, welcome back for another video. So today I want to kind of talk to the new guys into watches. I'm talking about the guys that maybe they've only had or only still have one watch. Maybe they're collecting watches and they've just never really thought about this. How do you make one watch into multiple or how do you get some interest back in a watch that maybe you've fallen out of favor with? Well, a really easy, cheap way is different straps. Now, I'm into leather straps. There are all kinds of different straps out there. Go ahead and research that, and that opens up a door 10 times bigger than just leather. But I have certain looks that I'm into, certain things about leather straps that I particularly like. So you might see that these are fairly similar, but your taste is gonna dictate where you go. The point is making this change just to the watch can really, truly make it a new watch for 20 bucks up to, you know, 150, 200 bucks if you want a really bespoke unit, totally up to you. And then there's also clasps. If you're happy with the buckles that come on just about every strap out there, that's cool. That's free, that works. Pretty much all of them are gonna be great that come with the leather, but if you want a single, if you want a butterfly, if you want whatever other kind of clasp out there you enjoy, you can do that as well on just about any strap out there. There's all different sizes and colors and types to fit just about anybody's taste. So all you have to do is just hold the stuff up. Okay, so we've got a black face here on a very traditional field watch. And it came, which one did it come with? It came with, oh, the one that's on it. <laughs> I forgot I put it back. So it's a Hamilton. And the strap it came with is nice. It's soft, it's not very pliable, but it's soft and it's got calf skin on the inside, so it feels really good. You know, there's nothing wrong about it. There are no deal breakers with it, but it's not especially pliable. I've certainly had stiffer. It does have some extra padding here in the first half, which is very typical. So it's especially on the stiff side. And then the part that wraps around is definitely better, but I prefer the whole thing to be just super pliable, like just like this down here. I want that all the way around to really conform and disappear on my wrist. I don't like to feel where the strap is or, or watch it, uh, you know, sticking out or anything like that. And there's a big misnomer that bands will, or straps, I, I say bands most of the time, but I'm talking leather straps at this point, that they break in. That's really misleading to a lot of people, especially new people. There is nothing that is gonna magically make an inherently stiff constructed type of leather into soft leather. It just doesn't happen. What breaking in means is it's gonna conform. So as you wear it, it's gonna naturally hold the shape of your wrist, but that's it. It's just gonna stay here instead of staying here. Still gonna be stiff. It's still not gonna flex and just disappear with your movements. It's just gonna be stuck in this position. <laughs> so that's all break in means. If you're looking for a better quality leather, you have to buy it. You can't make this any better than it is. And pay attention to your quality ratings when you see that genuine leather. Now, I, I thought the same thing years ago and I, I was not a leather person. I actually learned this from a leather factory that I toured many years ago and did videos on. Genuine leather is a grade. It doesn't mean real leather. It means bottom of the barrel. You've got different sections of the hide. We'll pretend this is an animal hide and it's broken up into layers. The genuine leather is just the bottom layer. They've scraped off and eliminated all the natural textures and the oils and the softness and just gotten down to the bottom gut layer. And that's why it's so stiff, right? So that's, that's cheap. And then they can laminate it and they can press it and they can pattern it and they can color it and do whatever they want to make it look nice, but it's never going to be super soft. And then you get into the top grain and that's the middle section they still it's still not the best but they're at least giving you some of the softer sections it's still going to be able to be molded and colored and sealed 
because it doesn't have any top texture, they've already sanded, buzzed, scraped, etc. away the very top layer of the hide. But then you get into full. And that's when it's left alone and it is super supple and soft all the way through and you're left with the best parts of the hide. The problem is the hide itself has to be in great shape because you see it all. This is not textured, it's not artificial, it is the real animal exterior skin. So that's why they're more expensive because only the great ones can be used. Whereas the other ones, it's scraped away and it's made to look however the factory wants, cheaper. So what we got here is something that I wanted to switch out as soon as I got it. And this is true of virtually every watch I've had up to like $3,000. Below that, you're just gonna get something that looks pretty in marketing and looks pretty in the shelf and gets you to buy the watch, but it's not gonna be great. It may be very good, may even be excellent, but it's not gonna be everything you wanted in your personalized strap. You still have to go after market for that. So what color do we want to go with? Well, just hold it up. Look at that. Look how different that watch instantly got just by holding it up. Take a picture. This is what I recommend. Just take a top down picture like this because in person, you know, you're looking at the details in person. So I'm, I'm sitting here in front of the camera and I'm looking at the watch, I'm looking at the second hand going around, looking at the details and the stitching. I'm not getting the overall big picture of how this goes with that. I mean, it goes well, obviously I bought one, I liked it, it sold me on it. I'm not even a brown kind of guy. I really prefer black bands and straps, but man, lately some of these combos with white and black and gray dials are really working for me in different types of brown. But take a picture, all right? Just lay your, the strap that you're considering on top. Take a top-down picture, just like you guys are seeing right now. Look how different that looks. I mean, it's a totally different watch, right? Maybe a darker, dressier brown. This is an example of the cheaper leather. Look how shiny that is. That's because that's been glossed over and there's chemicals on it. Uh, it's basically plastic at this point. You know, that's not real hide <laughs> underneath it is, but it's still just genuine leather. Let's see if it's stamped under here. No, the stamping under here says calf and that's just talking about the inside. So the inside's a little softer on your skin and it's got a little squishy padding, but this top here, it's just your genuine leather. So let's, let's look at the dark brown, you know, totally different again, little in between. I don't actually like that. Uh, with the black, it's too close. So, you know, that's, that's a no, forget about it. To me, I'm, I'm a professional photographer by trade. So looking at color and contrast are just instant to me. And I know if something works or doesn't literally just glancing at it. So you may have to think about it if you're not used to thinking about those kinds of things. And when I'm talking texture, I'm talking pattern. Let's look at a black here with a fake, uh, I'm gonna, let's see, it's, I'm gonna call that crocodile. I think the alligator is a tighter pattern, but it's fake. This is pressed in. This started out f plain and, and flat like that, and then they mold it. So you get that. Again, genuine leather, <laughs> or sometimes top grain. But look at that, okay? So now we've got a little glossier. It's not as glossy as this but it's, it's got that texture in it. So, okay, well, maybe we like black. We're not sure if we like the texture. Go back and forth. So this black is natural. This is a full grain and it has a natural matte finish, just oils on there. Me, I definitely like the matte the best. This is not a dress watch. I'm not looking for any kind of shine, but Let's try a different brown with that same full grain. I love that. This takes me to why I bought the watch and why it sold me on that color combo. You know, I think field watch, military use, out in the field, natural looking colors. I mean, and that's, this is from Kolareb. I don't remember the model. Let's see if it's stamped. I'll look it up and put it down. Oh, there it is, uh, the Vera Pele. No, wait, maybe that's, I can't remember if that's the model or the, 
town they're in. Anyway, I'll, I'll stick it down below. So that just, poof, that that's awesome. I mean, that when I saw this strap on the website, and by the way, website colors, they're not always accurate. Almost always going to be different in real life, especially in full grain where every sample is a little different than the photos. So bear that in mind. So we're gonna switch out to this. I mean, this is a nice band. This is a nice color stock band, but this shade of brown and this texture with that natural hide, boom, that is absolutely what I like. And then what I'm gonna do is swap out to a clasp because I really, like I said, don't like buckles. The Colorab buckles are very nice. They're very well constructed. They're brushed. They have a nice thick flat tongue and the holes fit very well. No problem with whatsoever. And it's a nice thick, about a three and a half mil thick on their straps, on most of them at least, all of them that I have. And then two hoops, and I, I know this from a couple other that I've already done, I'm gonna have to fix, I mean, fix in place, not correct, this floating hoop because it's designed to work with their buckle and it's held in place. But when you go to most clasps, they are narrower, and what happens is this slides off into the clasp mechanism. So we'll fix it in place and take care of that. And it's as simple as drip, drip. So the first thing we have to do is remove the bands, straps. I'm gonna say bands like forever. <laughs> now I have not converted this one yet to quick release because I don't anticipate using it anytime soon. And I'm just doing them as they come up in projects. And boy, do I have projects coming up, man. I got, I got watches out the wazoo to do, man. I got so many things coming up. It's, I got like 20 watches here. It's awesome. <laughs> I am going headfirst into this hobby. I've got a literal table full of tools on the other end here and they're still coming in. I placed a huge, disgustingly expensive order for lubricants, which was by far the most expensive part of this hobby so far. Although I haven't bought a microscope. I'm sure I will at some point, but I haven't right now. Man, this one is always tough to get. It's a snug, snug fit. The holes on these lugs are so far in, it's hard to get the, the leverage. And these particular leather ends are really thick and close to them. There we go. I just don't want to poke through. So this will go back in my case. Don't know when I will use him again. I'm sure I will sometime. So now we have this guy here. Now, one thing about using single-sided clasps is you may want to reverse your strap orientation. You may not, but I, when I'm doing up my either buckle or clasp, I want the majority of the action to be on the lower side of my wrist, right? So that would be the top of the watch. If I'm pulling a, if I'm pulling a clasp over, I wanna do it this way. I don't wanna do it from the top where I can't see what I'm doing. It's just not natural. So flipping it like this up is more natural to me. And on the clasp, that means it's gonna be like this. So with it in the clasp, on the bottom of your wrist, it comes over like this and folds, right? So it's coming from the bottom. That's what feels natural to me. So that's why I'm reversing it, but do it any way you want to. Now these are super easy because these are already quick release. In the hole. Still takes a little effort to get it in here because this strap is a little thicker than the stock. And like I said, those holes, the lug holes are so close to the case, there we go, that you have to kind of really squish it in. And what I did to do it the first time is I, I took this against the table corner like this and made a dent and that helped, you know, give me some slack to where I could get that other lug to go in the hole. But now that it's been in there a little bit more than once, It'll click right in, there we go. All right, so now we've got our upside down assembled. And then we can 
take off the stock buckle. And these are nice exposed push pins. Love those. Take that off. Slide the pin out, take the tongue out. Now see, this is not captured. This one is, it's tied. So it's not gonna ride up towards the watch, but this one is not. So now we will attach this, which is just another bar. Another note, I know I've mentioned it before, when you order any clasp, you're measuring the buckle size, not the lug to lug. On most leather straps, they taper down two millimeters. So if you have a 20 up here, it's 18 down here. And check the site, wherever you ordered from, or the manufacturer's specs, or measure if in doubt to make sure that's true. But almost always it's down two. So if this is an 18, this is a 16. And by the way, ordering a 16 gets a little harder. I do have some. <laughs> And uh, I had to order a couple for my dad. I'm redoing stuff on his 1968 Longines. And I finally found some stuff that's going to work for him. Give it a push. There we go. Oh, see, it's so thick. It's hard to keep it aligned and squish it at the same time. Get in there. And then have it pop up. There we go. Woohoo! See, this is what I'm saying. This will slide into the mechanism, and that happens when you take it on or off. So we're just gonna fix that after we get everything set, and it'll stay right there for us. Works perfectly. Okay, so sizing may or may not be the same hole that you were using for the buckle, because some clasp designs have this spread a little bit farther uh, from this joint than a buckle would. So you just have to try it on and see. And until you get this situated, just be aware of it sliding. <laughs> so let's just test it real quick. I just randomly chose the second hole. And that's too loose, way too loose. So that's good. <laughs> we want a little bit more anyway. Let's go ahead and move it to the fourth one. See what happens. That feels a little snug going over the wrist. However, it's not yet broken in at all, so that may be okay. I mean broken in as in in the right locations. Ooh, and that is beautiful. Oh, yes, thank you. That is great. Not pinching anywhere. I prefer to wear mine lower. I know some people like theirs up here above the wrist bone. My arm and hand is just not built that way. It looks like I'm wearing, you know, waders or something with the wrist, with the, the watch way up here. And my wrist bone is, you know, a little farther up, I think, than some people's. And this never bothers me. As long as I'm not digging into my hand with the crown, I don't feel anything there. And it doesn't move at all. And it's not pinching me. I've got some slack here. That's a perfect fit for me. So that works. If this wasn't right, because this doesn't have any micro adjustments, what I would do is first try a different brand clasp because they are slightly different. And all we're looking for is, you know, something less than the width in between these holes. Or, got this the other day, you can go ahead and punch yourself the perfect hole. There's plenty of room here to punch a hole right in the middle. And then you can use the clasp of your choice and get your sizing exactly where you like it. So that's an option. This whole set was like seven bucks. Definitely worth picking up for great. There's our fit. Now let's go ahead. I mean, look how much easier this is than a buckle. You never have to worry about dropping the watch, which is what guys like me where now when I was on the buckle, I was at the number two hole. When you're at that extreme, you just, you're fighting to get the thing on, right? And then you're fighting to bend that down into the loop. And then you're often not even using the second one. So it looks goofy or you have to remove it. That, I mean, oh, I don't know why everybody doesn't go to these. They are awesome. So that's what we want. Now I'm gonna go ahead and super glue this, make sure it's turned around the right way. 
and this watch project is done. Now I can just pick this up, be completely happy with it. Bada bing, bada boom. One down, a few more to go. Love doing this stuff, man. Look how simple that was. And the other cool part is when you find combinations that you like like this, set your bands up, set your clasps up with the combinations you like, make them all quick release like I showed you in my other video. I mean, you're changing out complete systems here that you know fit you perfectly in seconds. How cool is that? For peanuts, absolute peanuts. You could even, you could get quick release spring bars for your buckle ends and you could even make these quick release. No reason you can't do both ends of your straps. It's whatever you want to do, man. Peanuts. This stuff is so cheap. This hobby is so cheap. Beyond spending stupid money sometimes on the watch itself, the other part is just fun, man. Have some fun. Change out your stuff. Make yourself new combos and that's it. I mean, this is just supposed to be fun, right? That's it. Hope it helps. Links are down below. We'll see you next time.